tonight on KSL Outdoors. All right, we'll get some fish here. The East Fork of the Bear River and what biologists from TU and the DWR are doing to help the habitat here on the river. And banding ducks at night at Farmington Bay. I'm Adam Eagle, and this is KSL Outdoors. KSL Outdoors with Adam Eagle he is brought to you by your local Ford stores. Welcome to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Eagle and welcome to the High Uintas. You know, we're here along the East Fork of the Bear River. Today, we're going to show you some projects that are happening here on this stretch of the river by TU and by the DWR. And we're going to go out fishing with the guy that wrote the book on fishing Utah, our good buddy Brett Prettyman from Trout Unlimited. <laughs> This was one of the first places that I remember fishing with my dad. In May, after nearly 25 years of working for the Salt Lake Tribune, writing about fish, Brett Prettyman put down his pen and picked up his fly rod to join the ranks of Trout Unlimited to pursue his passion in protecting fish and the waters they thrive in. The favorite thing I covered was fishing and issues surrounding fish and headwaters and, and that's exactly what Trout Unlimited is all about and it was uh, you know, an organization that I covered through the years and admired and thought there's a lot of opportunity for me to continue doing what I love and protecting what I love and making sure there's opportunities like this in the future for my kids and my grandkids. Oh, oh, nice. Better fish, too. I'm coming your way. That's the best fish of the day. That's pretty, oh, too. Oh, it's a Big bonnie. Cutty. Nice. Now they're so pretty. That's a pretty good fish yeah. for this little river. Yeah, it is. No way. Look at that guy. For Woo. a little teeny river like this. Look at this guy. Pretty. Yeah. That's a good fish anywhere. Yeah, really. And just the colors. I always say these little fish, what they lack in size, they make up for in beauty. And attitude. And he had both. An attitude. There you go. <laughs> yeah. When anglers think of chasing trout in Utah, most tend to go to the Green, the Provo, the Logan, and maybe the Weaver Rivers. But not many know the importance of the Bear River and what it means to one of our native species, the Bonneville cutthroat trout. Fish on! Got a cutty. Come here, little guy. Native of the Bonneville Basin of Utah, southeastern Idaho, southwestern Wyoming, and eastern Nevada, Bonneville cutthroat trout today only occupy about 30% of their historical range, and over 50% of that range is right here in the Bear River Basin. You know, they have such a short growing season up here that they don't get a chance sometimes to get real big. But biologists are finding out that some of these fish are actually traveling a long ways to get to these areas to spawn. About five years ago, I was on, on the Wyoming range exploring. Uh, a grad student had put telemetry in the main stem bear um, and uh, was surprised to see that these, some of the fish had swam 45, 50 miles up the, this uh, tributary. They were surprised, pleased to see that they had gone that far. So I was up there fishing for them. We were catching 20 inch plus fish, 45 miles in this uh, tributary that, you know, in some places you could easily jump across. As a Utah guy, I was like, wait a second, you know, if this is happening with main stem Bear River cutthroat trout in Wyoming, it's probably happening in Utah too. And in fact, they were. Bonneville cutthroat trout that were caught near Evanston, Wyoming, were tagged and found to have traveled to the headwaters of the Bear River. Those fish are in Evanston, and then they come up here. And there's a chance for, you know, to, to make that a bigger thing, for more of those fish uh, to come up and, and, and do what they're supposed to do. Oh, nice. Oh, there he is! Woo! Might Perfect! Maybe. What a slurp, I loved it. Trout Unlimited is working on projects to make sure that Bonneville Cuts have a better chance to return here to spawn. We'll show you some of their efforts a little later in the show. Is that a brookie? I think it is. Yep. Look at the white fins. Yep. God, so pretty. I know, there you go, there you go. You're still riding though too. 
Yeah. And, can't you know, take the right. You can take the writer <laughs> out of the newsroom, but you can't take the writer out of the writer. That's exactly right. And, uh, yeah. So the fishing book, the you and his book, and I have another one cooking. Good deal. I say more with Brett and Trout Unlimited here in a moment. Some of the projects they're working on. But first, tonight's Burt Brothers quiz question. The Bonneville cutthroat trout that once roamed ancient Lake Bonneville was once thought to be extinct. But through 50 years of conservation and restoration efforts, the Bonneville cutthroat trout now exist in about 35% of their historical range. But Bonneville cutthroat trout are not the only native trout found in Utah. Our Burt Brothers quiz question tonight is, how many subspecies of cutthroat trout are native to Utah? The answer when KSL Outdoors, powered by Ford, returns to the Bear River. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors, back here on the East Fork of the Bear River. I'm Adam Eagle, and check out that beautiful brook trout here we just caught. Hey, in a moment, we have follow biologists as they do a study here on the East Fork of the Bear River. That in just a moment, but first, tonight's answer to our quiz. Our question tonight is, how many subspecies of cutthroat trout are native to Utah? Here's the answer. The three most notable native cutthroat trout subspecies are the Bonneville cutthroat, Yellowstone cutthroat, and the Colorado River cutthroat trout. However, there are two others that biologists have found and are also open to consideration. The Lahotan cutthroat and the Vada native were thought to be extinct for decades until some pure strain specimens were discovered in Utah's Pilot Mountain Range. The greenback cutthroat is another. In 2009, the DWR discovered a small stream in the LaSalle Mountains that they believe holds an isolated population of greenbacks. How they got across the continental divide is still a mystery. Grab the we're on the East Fork Bear River. I think we're going to be up like around 500 volts. And we're up here doing some electrofishing surveys of, of fish. Away we go. So what we're doing today, we're, we're kind of collecting baseline data for what fish we have in here, kind of the existing condition with the irrigation the way it's worked now. Water from the Bear River and its tributaries is removed every irrigation season to water farm fields. At the same time, however, Bonneville cutthroat trout also get into the farmer's canals and fields and cannot get back out. Trout Unlimited has been working on projects that will improve the water diversions for the farmers and prevent trout from being stranded in those canals. August of 2013, uh, we came in and completely rebuilt the diversion here. This is called a water diversion. It takes water from the river and delivers it to the canal. A lot of this uh, irrigation infrastructure was put in in the late 1800s. And this is what it looked like before Trout Unlimited came in and restored it. It was very challenging for the farmer and rancher to get the water here. Uh, they were typically wading in, you know, with cowboy boots and piling up rocks by hand. Uh, since we redid the structure right here, um, all he has to do is come here and turn the wheel and he gets the water he needs. So we started by putting the big line of rocks in here uh, so we can maintain the elevation to get the water into the canal. The entire structure here as far as the head gate was rebuilt. And then part of the deal to do that, we put a fish screen in down below, which keeps the fish out of the canal. So water comes in through the head gate down the canal. And so water goes down through the screen, enters a pipe, and then goes out into the canal. So basically the rancher gets clean water. And, it, and on top of the screen, the fish and debris just keeps going back down and returns to the East Fork Bear River. Jim says there are already about 40 diversions and fish screens in the Bear River watershed doing this exact same thing. The idea is to use updated diversions to deliver the water to the farmer more efficiently and keep those fish out of the canals. Another part of the project is combining canals, thus leaving more water in the system. The plan is to again remove the canal from the East Fork Bear River and move it downstream into an existing canal on the main stem bear. So that's about seven miles of river habitat. Uh, on average, they take about 20 to 25 CFS, cubic feet per second. Uh, for instance, that would probably double the flow that we're seeing right now. Over several years, we should see a response in the fish. In particular, for cutthroat trout, we're probably looking at three to four years out for their generation time. We should see more fish over time. And again, we're also keeping the fish out of the canals and so they can move back and forth without taking a wrong turn. Bonneville cutthroat trout. One, two, ten. In four to five years after the canals are combined and the diversions are put in, biologists will come back to this stretch of the East Fork of the Bear River, 
electrofish it and find out if there are more Bonneville cutthroat trout in the system. Basically, what we offer to the rancher or water user is a new structure, better operation and maintenance of their water, and in return, we put a fish screen in that keeps the fish out of the canals. So we're reconnecting a lot of the, uh, the small tributaries, like the East Fork Bear River or other streams, so that Bonneville cutthroat trout can reach their spawning areas and then move back downstream. So not only will those water diversions keep those fish from getting into farmers' fields and eventually dying in their fields, it'll also add more habitat and more water here on the East Fork of the Bear River for more pretty little Bonneville cutthroat trout like that guy. Time now to head back to the guys at Fish Tech for tonight's fishing report.